Hello, this is Clement. Um, uh, I just taught a workshop here in Turin yesterday about uh, using KiCad to do a circuit board layout. And this is a video of the process. So our starting point, this is KiCad, our starting point is this schematic. And I'm not going to go into how to make a schematic. So this is this video is just about layout. So just going through the circuit, there's a USB port in here. There's a USB to serial converter over here. A voltage regulator over here with capacitors either side. There's an ESP32 module here and the serial link from the uh, from the USB to serial module is connected to the serial on the ESP32. There is a row of RGB LEDs over here. So that's D1 to D8. And they are common anode. And all their anodes are connected to individual pins, whereas all their cathodes are joined together and connected through these resistors to these three pins here. And there is an expansion header which has a bunch of analog pins. Uh, so you can, you can connect other stuff to this board. And also there is a button here for reset and the button here for activating a bootloader. Right, so the first thing to do when you, uh, after you have a schematic is to assign footprints to each component. Now this is this is a fairly KiCad specific thing. In other CAD applications, you usually have um, a footprint and component kind of joined together as one entity. Whereas here you have an abstract 47 picofarad uh, capacitor, and you assign it a footprint. And I've already done all of these, but just to show you how it goes. So. Uh, so this one, if I wanted to reassign it to be a different size, I could go, this is now a 1206. And also you can, you can look at, you can look at each component and um, each footprint and see what it looks like. So for example, the ESP32's footprint looks like this. All right, so let's assume this is done. And the next thing to do is to generate a netlist. So I click on generate netlist and the netlist is the output of the schematic. It, uh, uh, it's uh, a list of connections between different signals, which tells you what pin is connected to each signal. So I generate the netlist, I save it in the default location, and then I go here, run PCB new. And now this will tell me that there isn't currently a board. So that's correct. There isn't currently a board. We want to make one. So we make one. And it's empty. As you can see, there's nothing there. Now, if you want to have something there, you need to read in a netlist. So we read the netlist, close this. And all the components are now here. Now, uh, if you make any changes to your schematic, they will not automatically propagate. So if you make a change to your schematic, you generate a net new netlist and you read it in. And this, this is something that is, uh, is changing in later versions of KiCad. So there, there is a method for automatically propagating it, but for now we're just using this. Now KiCad has several um, rendering modes or view modes. And uh, there's the default one, which is no longer default after version 5. It's called Legacy there. And there's the OpenGL and Cairo modes. And normally you want to be working in the OpenGL mode, because that's where most of the functionality is. But uh, in the Legacy or default mode, there is one function that is not there yet in the OpenGL one. 
and that is to spread out all the footprints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to footprint mode, clicking over here, and then I right click, sorry, right click here, global spread in place, spread out all footprints. Okay, and now they're all spread out. Now, at this point, I can switch back to OpenGL, and from now on, I'm working in OpenGL. Now. Um, the way the user interface works in KiCad is uh, you point with the mouse and then you press a button to activate on the keyboard to activate the function. So for example, I press M and M is for move. And it's uh, like I can also click on a part and then press M to move it. But it's enough to point. You can just point to a part and press the button. And so M is move, R is rotate. So what we're going to do, I'm going to rotate this over here. Now, I've done this board before. I, I roughly know where everything goes. So here we're working in hard mode. We're doing a single layer layout. Um, now, I know this is doable in one layer because all my workshop participants yesterday managed to do it in one layer. So yeah. Um, Often when you're making boards uh, with a commercial service, you're, you, you'd use multiple layers. There's no reason not to. But uh, in this case, because we were etching the boards on the spot, we decided to stick to one layer. So um, when you start routing, you, you usually have some constraints on where you can put things. So in this case, we want the antenna of this module to be next to a board edge and to not have any copper under it. We want the USB connector here to also be on a board edge. Uh, we want the LEDs to be in a line starting from D1, ending in D8. And uh, we want the reset and uh, bootloader buttons to be fairly close to the module. And we want uh, the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, that's this one, to also be fairly close to the module. OK, so let's, with that in mind, we start moving things around. And this is a puzzle. And the, the goal of this puzzle is to place things so that they, there are as few crossing white lines as possible. So I'm going to take this one and rotate it. And you see when it's rotated like this, uh, there's a bunch of white lines crossing over here. And when I, when I rotate it like this, they don't cross anymore. So this is a good orientation for routing all those, all those lines. So we have this one. This one connects to these two. By moving it around, you can see what it, what it connects to. So it connects to these two. This is a good place to place it. Uh, it's possible to route the trace between between there. Um, also, this one we we said we wanted it to be close to the module, so we're gonna put it put that here. Okay, by pressing home, you can uh, sort of scale the whole uh, the whole layout so it fits on your screen. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move all the LEDs. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a grid, which is um, uh, seven millimeters per square. So I want those LEDs to be on a seven millimeter grid. So I set my user grid to seven millimeters and switch to that. And just to make this a bit less busy, I'm going to remove the texts. So we have this is D3, this is D5, and just turn on the grid so I can see where I'm working with. Right, so one that here, one that five, six, seven, eight. Here, two is here, six, 
six that's four that's one that's seven and they are now all on the grid so I know that they are seven millimeters apart so I'm going to switch back to 0 0.25 and I'm going to switch off the grid because I don't need it right now all right this one fits somewhere around here and this way it's uncrossed so you see there's the minimum number of crossings happening here um, then with these ones we have that corner over there uh, is going to connect to each of those pins so we're going to rotate these so that that corner is in the same corner on all of them and it's the upper right here so I'm using R for rotate I'm gonna move these out of the way okay now I can also select all of these and move them all as a block right so that leaves these here so over here we have if we switch back to the schematic we have these resistors so we're going to place these next to next to this region so we can easily route them so that's this one this one and this one and I'm just going to rotate these and move them fairly close together so that I have maximum routing freedom All right so we got those and that leaves the power supply and USB here so let's move the power supply and the big power supply capacitors out of the way for now and focus on this so again looking at the schematic we have USB connector two resistors uh, USB to serial module two resistors and that goes to the actual serial port on the on the module so USB port that's the two resistors that that go to the USB there's the USB to serial module and there's the two resistors that go to the ESP32 now you you notice here that uh, the topology here does not allow us to avoid crossing lines so we're either going to have a crossing here or we're going to have a crossing here this is not avoidable so we'll have to work around it we'll, we'll get to that in a minute okay so I'm going to place these fairly close to the module here I'm going to place this one here and then we have these so these go over here and then these two if you look in the schematic it's these two capacitors over here so I'm just gonna place them somewhere in this area So this is this is our rough placement now of all the parts and this this is gonna go next to this one you can see how it connects there and that one is gonna go over here now we can take this whole thing and move it as a block and place it approximately here okay so this is this is a rough placement of all the parts on the board you 
to make it a bit more compact like this but we need to remember our external constraints so nothing above this nothing beyond this so I'm gonna move this in a bit and I'm gonna move all of these in a bit all right so this is our basic placement and now we're going to do some routing now I'm gonna go into the design rules and then set the clearance to 0 0.25 millimeters and the track width to 0 0.3 so the this is our minimum this is what we're we're going to be using by default for all these all these nets now I'm gonna go into the global design rules here and define a few more track widths so I'm gonna put in 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 and now uh, there is a bug at least on OS X where if you uh, enter something like this and then click OK it does not get recorded so make sure to click somewhere else after entering one and then it does get recorded okay so now we um, we have set our tracks now all the track widths are available over here now we can start doing some routing so what we're going to do is we're going to start in this area with the USB and the serial and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, press X to switch to the interactive router that's also this button here if you prefer that and then press E for, for properties and make sure that shove is enabled the default is walk around switch it to shove okay everything else is fine so what we're going to do is we're going to start here press X and drag a track um, just point with the mouse to where you want to go okay so far so easy now if you want to uh, if you like the shape that a track has you can click to set some of it to fix some of it so up to this point it is now fixed and then route it to the end now this one we can't cross this track so what we're going to do is we're going to route it actually through the resistor here all right and then just continue this way okay we have most of our traces this one we can also route through here now you see if a trace needs some more space it's going to push the others out of the way this is what the shove mode that we set earlier does so it makes space for itself okay that's fine so then we have here this trace and this trace here we're going to I'm going to press W to set the higher track width because this is our power supply trace we want it to be a bit thicker so don't worry too much about ground yet okay I'm gonna set the track to 0 0.3 again and then we have these two ground traces yeah let's do the ground traces later all right so the next thing to do I'm going to switch to 0 0.4 so use use thicker tracks if you have the space it makes the makes the process more reliable in production and they can carry more current so I'm gonna run this one down here and this is this is the interactive router it's gonna do strange things sometimes so just when you're happy with the shape of a trace you click to set it up to there that way you get nicer looking traces oh sorry that one's not actually connected to anything okay so um, I was in routing mode I hit escape to exit routing mode now I want to delete this trace because it doesn't actually go anywhere so what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to it and then you have the U and the I buttons and on this trace they do the same thing but if you look at for example this trace 
this is I, this is you. So it either selects the entire complex or just a segment from to the nearest two bands. So in this case, it doesn't matter which one you pick. So you press that and you hit delete. And if you're on a Mac, that's uh, FN backspace. That's your delete in case you're looking for it. Okay, so this one doesn't actually have a trace going from it, but this one does. So let's, let's drop that one. There. And there. So this is functionally an auto router. So you, you can just point it to where you want to go. But I find that I have preferences when it comes to how I want my tracks to look. So there we go. All of these are now routed. Uh, I'm going to switch back to 0 0.3. Now, the reason I'm switching back to 0 0.3 is because these traces over here, uh, they connect to these pads. And uh, you cannot connect to this pad if your trace is thicker than, than the, uh, the minimum spacing between pads. So if I, if I go for 0 0.6 here, it will not actually let me draw this because that would go too close to one of these pads. Uh, let's try 0 0.4, it won't let me do that. So I have to use 0 0.3 on this one. What I can do, if I wanted to, would be switch track width here. So I start it with a thinner track and then continue with a, with a thicker one. Could do that, but I'm not going to now because this chip doesn't actually need that much power. So that's going to be fine. Okay. So then we have here, this is the red, green, and blue signals, uh, the cathodes of these LEDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these thin tracks and just draw a track all the way that way. Okay, so that's signal number two. And then signal number three, we can also fit inside there, which is great. See how we can actually fit two, two signals within, within that space. And then we have signal number four over here, that's the blue one. That one, we have lots of space on the outside, so we'll just use that space. Nope, sorry. Let's do that again. So make sure you click before you hit escape if you want to finish a trace. You click until it's covered up to the point where you want it. All right, so I'm going to connect these. You can see here, every time you connect an unconnected uh, trace, this number goes down. When it goes to zero, you're done. Okay. 
okay, all these are done. Okay, then we have these three here. So that one's gonna go over here. That one's gonna go over here. And then we have this one. Oh no. Yeah, that's not a good trace. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in here. And I'm gonna select this trace and delete it and delete this one. And then go from here. So it looks a bit nicer. Same thing here. So I click delete and it's asking me which of these two do I want to delete. So it's that one. Actually, I'm going to do this one as well, and then make a nice looking connection. There we go. So then we have these traces over here. That one. That one. That one. And actually, we can switch to 0 0.4 at this point for the others because we got plenty of space here. Okay, so we got this one. Actually, this is our power supply trace. We're going to make it thicker in a bit. I'm going to switch back to 0 0.3 and connect the grounds over here. Now, don't worry about the grounds being very thin at this point because we're going to do a ground pour in a minute. Almost all the grounds connected. One, two, three. Right here. And that leaves me with two unconnected nets. Now, uh, because we're cutting the board off over here, uh, we're going to run a trace around this whole thing for power, which is not ideal, but it's going to work. And uh, I'm running this at 0 0.6 because that's the main supply trace for ESP32, and that needs a fair bit of current. Right, so we've connected everything except one net, apparently. I can't really see where it is. However, if we go over here, we can click on this, and then on DRC, which should tell us there's no errors, that's good, and then list and connected. We have, where are you? Here, we're missing a connection here. Okay, so this, connect here, there we go. Nothing unconnected now. Yeah, so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add some restriction areas 
over in this antenna area and below this trace because there's a power trace going in here on the ESP32 module and because we're etching these boards uh, and there will be no solder mask I'm worried that there might be a short in, in this area so I'm just going to make sure that there isn't. Okay so I'm gonna switch the grid on again this is in the render zone over here switch on grid and Yeah, so I'm using this tool over here, which is keep out areas. So first of all, I'm going to make a big keep out area. And this is uh, on the front copper layer, and it is blocking copper pores. So like that, like that, Like that. And zoom in when you're closing it to make sure that it joins so you know it's a continuous area. Okay, so same thing over here. I'm going to start here. No copper pour. So you've got these restriction areas here. Now we could make this actually a bit more compact. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete these traces and then move this in a bit and then redraw it, redraw the traces. So I'm going to point here and select this trace, delete it. I'm selecting with you. So I would select the entire thing you select just that that segment. And we can keep this one. So then I'm going to do a select like this, and then press M to move the whole thing in. Like this. Yeah, that should fit. And then I'm going to redraw those traces. So X and 0 0.3 and there's that one and there's that one and there's that one. There's this one. That one from this point on I switch using W to a bigger trace. There we go. So this is it, and now I'm going to add a fill, a copper pour. So I'm going to switch to a larger grid. So this is a one millimeter grid, and I'm just going to add a grounded front copper area. And it doesn't really matter where it ends exactly. You just need to make sure that it joins together at the end. Okay, so now we have a copper pour. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a board outline. Yeah, this one is not straight, but that's okay. We can we can deal with that. So edge cuts. This is the layer where the which defines the board outline. And with this one, you actually have to place it in the right place. So we want it. Um, I'm gonna switch to 0 0.5. So we want to cut it at the antenna and between the two lines on the USB connector. Oh, sorry. Uh, we need to switch to graphic line mode. So we're drawing lines rather than adding a zone this time. So here we go. And 
again zoom in to make sure that they join. Okay, and then hit escape. And now we press B and you see that the zone has now clipped to the board area. And at this point we can go to view 3D viewer and look at our board. If you have 3D models installed for some parts, then they're going to show up at this point. So you can see I got a 3D model of this one, 3D model of these resistors. So they'll show up. That one, that one, that one, and that one. They don't have 3D models, so they don't show up. That's all right. So uh, if the shape of your board is showing, showing correctly in here, this means that you've correctly done the, the edge cuts. If the edge cuts don't join, then uh, the 3D viewer will complain. All right, so the last thing we're going to do, switch back to copper and then add some text. I'm going to add my name over here. So I click over there and I put in my name. Uh, I'm going to set this to 2.5 and 2.5. And you can see this is where it's going to go. So I place that in this corner, and press B again, and there it is. And I can move it if I want it closer here. I can do that. All right, so this is our board layout. We're basically done. There's nothing unconnected. So, oh, there is something unconnected. That's strange. Thought I connected these. So it's saying that ground on C4 and ground on C3 not connected. So this is ground C4, this is ground C3. Just to make sure. Oh, it's still saying the same thing. I don't know why. Well, they're clearly connected. I mean, the, the trace is there. So this must be a bug in the, in the connectivity tester. All right, so save the board. And uh, this is basically a ready layout. Now, if you want to etch it, what you do is you go to plot and uh, if, if you're getting this commercially made then you output in Gerber format. Uh, if not, like what we use for the workshop is we output it in Postscript and so we're outputting the front copper layers and that's mirrored and for a 4 output and plot. And it's mirrored because it's going to be mirrored again when you do Tonder transfer. Now, we also want the front paste layer. That one we don't want mirrored, but we want it negative. But before we do that, we're going to have to go to um, dimensions, pads, mask clearance. Because when you're etching a stencil, uh, you want the pads to start out a bit smaller. So we used yesterday minus 0 0.075, which is a bit too, the end, they ended up a bit too large. So I'm going to set it to actually minus 0. Point, uh, so this is what we had. I'm going to set it to uh, minus 0. 0.1. Okay, and then plot again, and focus. All right, so the result of this are these two Postscript files. So this is the, the board itself.
this is what it looks like. And this is the paste layer. And you see the pads are all slightly smaller. This is good. They're smaller by 0 0.1 millimeters in each dimension. So this is good because they will tend to over etch. So you want to you want to have them smaller than you need them. All right, so this is basically it. Here's our end result. That's the board.